Our next speaker is a woman who uh, is a mom and also a fighter. Uh, she won the largest case in California history against Orange County's Child Protective Services. Uh, they took her kids away without good cause, and today she has become uh, what she describes to be a, an accidental activist to protect other parents from having to go through the same thing, too. Uh, please welcome to the podium Deanna Fogarty, who is with us in Orange County today. Well, thank you for that applause, and thank you so much, all of you, for being here. It brings um, significant attention and a visual that so much is going on to uh, happening to families, parents, and children across this state and across this nation, for that matter. So um, let's just get behind Tom, the Tim Donnelly, for all that he's doing to bring attention to this. And. Um, Tim wanted me to share my story with you, and if you will indulge me, um, I'm going to do that now. Just so you know, my case is not the only case. There's millions of parents, millions of children. Their, their cases are equally as important. So basically, I'm a mom, and I, like most moms, would give my life for my children. It's my honor and my duty to protect, protect and guide them to the best of my ability until they are able to do so for themselves. Therefore, it was instinctual for me to seek assurance for my daughter's safety when there had become substantial cause for concern. A scheduled appointment with her doctor led to a call to Child Protective Services, and an investigation ensued. It was hard for me to believe that the need for these services had befallen my little family, but I did believe our circumstances called for a trained perspective, and so with trust, I accepted their help. I had full faith and belief that my daughter's well-being and safety was the fundamental purpose of this intervention, and so I complied with every command. I found those who were in charge at the onset of our case were professional and sensitive in their treatment of me and my children. But then, a replacement social wor worker was put in charge, and unlike her co-workers, she was frightening and intimidating. This social worker from the beginning seemed to have an agenda, and so without concern for the terror she imposed on my children, she threatened them to the point of tears. This individual with purpose and intention proceeded to build a false case against me that resulted in my losing custody of my precious daughters. She threatened me that if I didn't submit to her, I would never see my kids again. Abuse of power is a horrifying introduction when your relationship with your children hangs in the balance. I lost custody of my daughters for six and a half years, and with it, their childhood. I have no history of drug abuse, alcoholism, or breaking the law. I'm your average American mom who loves her children, and I did my best to protect them when I believed that protection was necessary. It's absolutely shocking to me that the very agency endowed with the power and purpose to protect children has become the perpetrator. This experience introduced me to so many parents, so many of you, who found themselves victimized by the system, willing to remove children from the protective parent. Their motive? I believe the funding. It's substantial and a significant reason why this agency cannot police itself. Child Protection Services is an agency that has been endowed with an abundance of power and yet limited checks and balances. A cluster of laws has shifted the agency's criteria for separating a child from their family. Unwittingly, this shift has created a financial incentive for summarily removing children from their homes. Not surprisingly, this policy creates an invitation to unwarranted removals and encourages the fabrication of evidence. Removing a child from their family is a severe course of action, which carries with it everlasting psychological trauma. My children and I know too well the devastation that can be exacted by a social worker, motivated by unchecked power and protected by her superiors. Seven years later, and confident of my innocence, I took on the task of clearing my name. Thankfully, after a seven-week trial and despite insurmountable odds, a jury of Orange County taxpayers held their agency accountable and rendered a decision in my favor against two of its social workers for denying my constitutional right to familial association. As one of the largest awards of its kind, the jury's award spoke volumes to their outrage at the county for their despicable conduct. 
the county appealed this judgment all the way to the United States Supreme Court, where the county's petition for writ of certiorari was denied and a $10.6 million award was granted. To, to this day, the county refuses to agree to any wrongdoing, in spite of the jury's findings to the contrary. The supervisor was permitted to work till retirement and received full benefits. The social worker who falsely accused me still works for the same agency and in fact was given a promotion. How can the system correct itself if it refuses to accept wrongdoing? Unfortunately, this kind of abuse of power is not uncommon. There are thousands of families nationwide, many whose stories mirror mine, and who should benefit from a similar kind of justice, but rarely do. Immunity laws, the lack of transparency and dependency proceedings, claims of confidentiality in the best interest of the child are but a few examples of how those with the willingness to abuse the power entrusted to them have managed to shield themselves from accountability for far too long. Suing the government is not for the faint of heart, but it's important to know that it's possible and that holding them accountable is essential if we want this kind of abuse to end. No American should fear their government is going to lie and take away their children. I pray for the day when cases like these are few and far between. Dr. Martin Luther King said it best, a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I encourage others who have a similar story to share it. Unity has the power to create an undeniable voice for justice. This story should have never occurred in America, and yet it does so with shocking frequency. I invite you to join Assemblyman Tim Donnelly in his fight to protect children and their families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deanna. That's a hard story to hear, but we're grateful that you're telling that story.